Greetings, respective viewers. I'm George from Ireland. I'm here at Gunnersbury Park House uh, in London. So, um, Gunnersbury Park, well, it takes its name from Gunhilda, who was the niece of that uh, celebrated 11th century king of England and Denmark, Knut, or Canute, as they sometimes called him, the man who was famously Canute against the tide. So, um, his, uh, his niece lived here until she was driven out of the realm in 1044. Don't want to go into it too much, but um, the, uh, the kings of Denmark, they also ruled much of England for some time, the Dane law, as in Danish law, the rest of England, where the Anglo-Saxons were, was playing Dane Gale, playing Dane Geld. There was Harold, Brut Br Harold Bluetooth, Hartha Canute, um, Swain Forkbeard and, Forkbeard and others. There was some intermarriage between um, English earls and thanes and the, the Danish um, uh, magnates. But um, anyway, eventually the Danes were defeated. Harold Goddison was half Danish. Um, but uh, so that's how this this area got its name. And um, what's now Gunnersbury Park, it was, it was considered about um, 10 miles west of London, very close to the, the village of Brentford, as was, where people could ford the River Brent, a tributary of uh, the River Thames. Uh, and so the land passed through several hands down the centuries. A very distinguished um, <clears throat> judge owned it for some time. The Earl of Buckinghamshire lived here. I won't go through the, the um, entire provenance of this uh, piece of turf. Um, and in uh, the late 17th century, there was um, a mansion built here according to the style of Andrea Palladio, that famous 16th century Italian uh, architect. And um, <clears throat> in, the, in the early 18th century, George II's daughter, Princess Amelia, lived here. People th th thought they should marry Frederick the Great, and he became King of Prussia, that famous uh, warrior king. But uh, he may well have had same-sex attraction, so he never wed, never had children. So that, in fact, that marriage didn't happen, and Amelia remained a spinster um, all her days, and indeed, and indeed died here. <clears throat> So this was her country seat, because as I say, even in the mid 18th century, this is considered well outside London. She also had a house, I think, I think it was Hanover Square, which was apt for a, for a Hanoverian. Um, anyway, so that house was pulled down, and in 1802, um, this house was built here. There were two man mansions. There was a large mansion and a small mansion. This is the large one, and so the park was divided. When I say park, it obviously wasn't publicly owned. It was park as in semi-landscaped gardens um, at the time. Um, so G Gunnersbury, the bur bury being a bit, bit like borough as in town. Um, so as Alexander Copland uh, started to build them in 1802, and uh, they were owned by two separate people, the large mansion with some land and the small mansion with some land. Now eventually um, Nathan Meyer Rothschild uh, bought both of them and thereby reunited uh, the park. So Rothschilds, they were very prominent um, uh, Jewish German bankers, but different branches of the family um, lived in um, France, the United Kingdom, the Netherlands, I can't think where else was it, Spain, Italy, Switzerland, several Western European, European countries. And they really um, uh, were the paramount banking family um, in the world for quite some time. Zach Goldsmith, the current Tory MP for Richmond, he's a dynast of the, of the Rothschild uh, family. And as obviously Lord Rothschild these days, who's perhaps one of the, the secular leaders of um, Anglo Jewry, though I think he's actually only a quarter Jewish um, by ancestry. And I'm not sure, it's, I don't think it's, even, it's not even his mother's mother. It's, it's his paternal grandfather who's a fully Hebraic. Um, Anyway, so uh, the smaller mansion had been built, uh, well, to the order of um, Stephen Cosser, uh, who made a fortune selling timber, and they call that Gunnersbury House as opposed to this one, Gunnersbury Park House. Uh, so that passed through several people, through the hands of several families. It's 1889, the Rothschilds got a hold of uh, both parts of it. But uh, London was expanding out to the west, the railway had come past here, and uh, then the First World War came, and. Um, London was expanding apace. There was more uh, desire for urban land, thought to be very worthwhile. And the, the borough just to the north is Ealing, just to the south was Brentford. London was more than 32 boroughs in those days, and there was a healthy rivalry between them. And Ealing Borough Council, well, Ealing, the queen of the suburbs, they didn't want lowly Brentford intruding on their patch. So um, they were worried this would be purchased by Brentford and it'd be, be just turned into council housing, to so say social housing, the deliberately low cost. But they were able to forfend that and um, the Rothschilds gave it to the nation. Now, in 1926, Neville Chamberlain, the ill-starred 
um, man for, of Munich. Um, he was Secretary of State of Health and then he, he opened it um, to the public. Okay, because it was for public recreation and even then they were recognizing that exercise was good, was good for health. You might say, well, isn't that bleeding obvious? But many people did, um, they did jobs that were physically laborious. They were um, construction workers, they were factory workers, they were farmers, they were stevedores, um, whatever else. Cleaning was much more demanding and time consuming. Remember, no washing machine, no dishwasher, no uh, vacuum cleaner. Um, no fridge, no freezer for most people, even no running water. So the thing about fridge and freezer is having to go and purchase fresh food every day, walk most of the way. Um, you know, very few people had cars. Even if you're going by bus or train, having to at least carry it a lot of the time. Um, so, uh, but as labor saving devices were becoming more affordable, people were um, using these other means of locomotion, not having to, w not having to walk and um, the middle class is not having to do things which are quite so physically demanding. But anyway, a little bit of effort, a little bit of um, uh, walking around, a few sports, things of that nature. And um, some of these urban children not seeing much countryside. So remember, this was not open to the public until 1926. So Neville Chamberlain, I sometimes think he's underrated, the chap who was Prime Minister, 1937 until the 10th of May, 1940, when he was succeeded by Churchill. So here it is. I was, um, uh, in quite a poor state, required, required a lot of renovation and eventually opened to the public as a museum. Now about 12 years ago it was functioning as a Victorian model school. It wasn't actually a school, but pupils would come here for one day for a taste of what schooling was like in the 19th century and having to stand up properly and, uh, and walk like this down the corridor and things like that and have to stand up every time that they were asked a question in class and saying please miss or whatever to the teacher and the school mom wearing one of those um, Victorian outfits dressed from her throat to her ankles and carrying a cane and for the slightest infraction being brought out into the into the corridor for a caning there weren't actually cane they're warned we're just going to pretend, we'll just swish it through the air, we won't hit you with it. But the pupils inside would hear the noise and realise just how severe it was. A lot of mental maths, you know, saying um, twice 12 instead of 12 times 2, um, things like that. Some Latin and f French whatever uh, <laughs> verbs to conjugate, things of that nature. I don't know if they do that anymore, but uh, that's, uh, that's um, a Gunnersbury house. Um, so the immediate area around it is called Gunnersbury just to the north Ealing and just to the south uh, Brentford. But uh, yeah, it's certainly well worth uh, looking around, discover the history of the area and of the very uh, notable residents of this house. Sometimes not the current building, but buildings which stood on the site. Another thing I should point out to you is, is further into the park, further south, there's a pond called the Potomac because it was um, uh, dug in the 1860s as the time of the American Civil War. People were always hearing about here about the army of the Potomac. In case you don't, don't know, the River Potomac is, is the river that flows through Washington, D.C. Um, and the Union Army, as in that's the Army of the North, well, the United States, they called their army the Potomac, as in near the East Coast, that was going to advance down uh, by the Potomac into Virginia and capture Richmond, the capital of Confederacy. Only took four years to go 100 miles, but there we are. Okay, so that gives you some idea of the dimensions of the house. Not all of it is open to the public. Little bits of it used for offices for the place. So there you are, well, uh, well worth visiting. You've got an idea of the scale of it now. Okay, I'll switch it off. So please support me on Patreon, PayPal, georgecallahan79 at gmail.com. Book online lessons with me in uh, any humanities subject, including French, GCSE, A-level, IB, 7 plus, 11 plus, 13 plus, or I edit documents, I translate documents, things like that. Book me as your tour guide in London. Goodbye.